My name is Josh Harley, and I'm the founder and CEO of Fathom Realty. Many of you listening to this presentation on the four steps to build a successful team have found yourself in a position where you've reached a level of success that most agents aspire for, and yet it's not the glamorous lifestyle you imagine it to be. You're working too many hours, you've reached a plateau in your business due to the lack of time and capacity, and maybe the quality of service that you're providing your clients is beginning to wane because you're juggling just too many balls. Worse, you realize that you don't own a business, you have a job. So what do you do? Where do you go from here? This is life's subtle way of telling you to either cut back or go all in. And today I wanna to talk to you about going all in because I don't believe in doing things halfway. This is when you know it's past time to build a team. So think about it this way. Top realtors earn more money than doctors do. Can you imagine a doctor running the business the way that most realtors do? It makes no sense, and yet that's how most realtors operate. It's time to stop treating real estate like a hobby and start treating it like a business. If this resonates with you, then I want to share the four steps you need to take in order to build a successful team and move away from having a job and towards running a business. Right? A business that can continue to earn you money even when you take that desperately needed two-week vacation. Now, I usually teach a two-hour introductory class on team building, but I only get 10 minutes here, so let's see how fast I can talk. The first step you need to take, even before hiring your first agent, is to build a solid foundation on which to grow your team. For most single agents, everything you may need to know is in your head, but when you run a team that no longer works, it's time to step back and evaluate your systems and processes. Will they work for a team? Can you use your current systems to manage your team, transfer leads, and so on? Have you written down your processes so new agents have something to look back on as you're training them? If not, it's time to spend two or three long weekends writing out your processes. The same thing goes for scripts. You may know exactly what to say and when to say it, but how about your agents? Even if you don't believe in scripts, you may be surprised to learn that you use them every single day and just don't realize it. One of the best things that I did for my team was implementing scripts and role playing. Part of your foundation also includes incorporating assistance. Now, by the way, th this is also a very important part of the next step. I could talk about working with assistants for an hour, but for the sake of time, I'll leave it here. It's important to hire a transaction coordinator and a marketing assistant for your business. Hand over the tasks that don't make you money so you can focus on the tasks that do. These two positions can potentially help you double your closings each year before you hire your first agent. It also helps give you the financial padding that it'll take to establish your team. The second step you need to take is to create and understand your value proposition. I can't stress this enough. You have to be able to clearly show a potential agent why they want to join your team and why they want to give you a 50% split. By creating a solid foundation first, you'll have a fair value exchange to justify the team split. Essentially, you're saying to the agent that if you join my team, we're going to handle the training, the support, the expenses, the branding, the marketing, and the lead generation so you can focus on working with clients and closing the sale. Then when you get a contract, the team will take it from there and handle the contract to close so you can focus on the next client. In other words, you may be giving up 50% of the commission, but we're gonna handle 70% of the work so you can do part that you love. Now you have a solid value proposition and a fair value exchange. You need to be able to show an agent that they're getting more than they give. To them, it's the get versus give, or the what's in it for me. The third step you need to take when building a team is to decide what team structure you're going to create. There are two main team structures, and then of course, there are numerous variations and hybrids of each. Just for the sake of time, I'm gonna focus on the higher level. We'll call type one the mentorship model. In this model, you're focusing on taking on agents to personally train and coach. You're focused on their personal growth, and I'll be honest, this model feels really good as you watch your agents grow their business and achieve new levels of personal, professional, and financial growth. In this model, you're attracting agents 
to your team because you're successful and they want to emulate you and learn from you. Just be aware that there's a huge flaw in this model. This model becomes a revolving door. At some point, your agents will begin to feel as though they've learned everything they can from you, and now they can be self-sustaining. Initially, you may think that's okay, and it's even what you want. However, herein lies the rub, right? In the beginning, you have to pour a lot of time and energy and love into each agent before they begin to generate enough closings to where you're earning back the time and money you invested in coaching them. Your business may even suffer a little due to spending so much time coaching them. Additionally, you can't justify as high a commission splits because you're expecting them to generate their own business. Just when you get to the point of making you money and things start to flow every single month, they decide that they're ready to spread their wings and fly solo. Yep, it kind of sucks. And it happens more than you think. But maybe that's what you love and it brings you joy and you're okay with making less money in the long term to see other people find success. After all, achieving success is a wonderful feeling, but I believe it pales in comparison to helping other people achieve their own success. The other model is the leads model. Almost every single top team in the country is structured after this model. In this model, agents are attracted to you for many of the same reasons as in the mentorship model, but more so because you're actively giving leads to them to close. The benefit to this model includes immediate gratification to both you and your agents. You're providing them the leads so they begin to close business very quickly. You see a significant increase in your income and unlike the revolving door of the first model, your leads become an addiction to your agents. It's harder for them to leave because they don't have the ability or the funds needed to generate the leads for themselves they become hooked on your proverbial crack, right? And as long as you treat them well, you lose fewer agents. The downside is that this model is very expensive to get started. It requires substantial upfront investments of cash versus investing just your time. Not everyone has the ability to start a team with this model, but if I had the choice, this is the model that I would create. Even if it meant starting with just one agent for the first year or two and slowly building up from there. An important part of the team model is deciding on compensation. In fact, this is step four. This can actually be a very long conversation, but I'll share just a few tips that I've learned the hard way through my own experience, as well as mentoring other team leaders. First, team splits matter. I don't mean for your agents, I mean for you. One of the biggest mistakes I see team leaders make is not charging a high enough split. They do that because they don't know how to verbalize or justify those splits. I'm sorry, but 80-20 splits don't work for teams. After two years, you're going to look back at your business and realize that you made more money as a single agent closing 40 homes per year than you did running a team closing 100 homes per year. Please don't make that mistake. Think about it this way. On an 80-20 split, your team has to close five sales for the same income that you'd earn on closing just one sale. But wait, you have to pay for all the marketing, lead gen, office space, etc. from your 20%. And guess what? 20% doesn't cover all those costs. And I have a feeling that you didn't start a team to lose money. If your agent thinks that a 50-50 split is unfair, then please ask them to define fair. If you're providing everything and paying all the bills and handling more than half of the work to close a sale, then isn't 50-50 split fair? After all, they get to keep the full 50% while you have to pay all the bills from your half. This is why the value proposition is so important and being able to verbalize that to your agents. There are actually five steps that I teach in my class. Step five covers team roles, which I'd love to talk about here, but this part takes over an hour by itself and we're already up against a hard stop. I wish I had more time, but I'll leave you with this. Be patient when hiring agents. Just because an agent is willing to join your team does not mean that you should hire them. If you're doing it right, you'll interview 10 agents at least for every one that you hire. Build an attractive culture for your team, a culture that rewards your agents for their hard work, celebrates their successes, and supports them through their losses. Create a sense of family. Do that 
and you'll build a team and a business where you'll want to show up every single day and be part of. Love on your agents, but don't mistake that for being soft. Set expectations and hold them to those expectations. Be willing to fire someone from your team if they're not performing, even if you really like them. Lastly, always remember that in order to succeed, your desire for success should be greater than your fear of failure. Don't wait until you know everything to get started. It's okay to learn along the way. So thank you for spending this time with me. If you want to talk more about teams, please feel free to reach out to me directly. It's a conversation and a topic I absolutely love.